Hey, welcome to tonight's Bible study. I'm glad that you were able to join me today. And uh, I'm going through the book of Luke. I'm in Luke 16. In Luke 16, there was an unfaithful servant that uh, was stealing from his master and not being wise with his master's goods. And when the master found out about it, he said, uh, get your stuff together because you're not going to be my manager anymore. And uh, the manager, he wondered what he was going to do uh, because he was losing his job. So he went to all the customers that he uh, had a relationship uh, with, close relationship, I'm sure. And uh, he wrote down their bills. If they owed 900 in olive oil, he wrote down that they only owed 450 uh, and then another one owed a thousand in wheat and uh, and he wrote down that he only owed 800 in wheat and so he figured by writing down what people owed uh, that they would welcome him into their household when he had nothing because he was getting too old to be able to work uh, for a living as far as manual labor, which is where it was at. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, the master commended him for being shrewd and shrewder than the people of the kingdom, it says, that we have been entrusted with worldly riches. Are we using those to win friends in the kingdom of heaven? Are we using those to bring people into the kingdom? Are we investing it in ministries that are producing disciples? Uh, or are we using it on our, on our own pleasures? Uh, are we making an investment for the Lord that's going to last forever? Or is it all going to be burnt up come judgment day? And so I hope that you are contributing to the kingdom no not only with your uh, time and efforts but also monetarily uh, and uh, you'll be blessed by doing that and uh, the Lord said if you're faithful with those things that don't belong to you then he will entrust you with much more and so he promises that and I know that he will fulfill that. But if you're not faithful with what doesn't belong to you, how in the world are you going to be able to be trusted with true riches, he says. So he knew that the people, the scribes and Pharisees, were uh, loving money. And he said uh, that uh, they said the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus and said he said to them you are the ones who justify yourself in the eyes of others but God knows your heart what people value highly is detestable in God's sight and amen to that so he uh, proclaimed that the law and the prophets were to the time of John and now the good news that the kingdom of God is being preached meaning through faith in Jesus Christ we are justified and get to enter into the kingdom of God but he said it's going to be easier for heaven and earth to disappear than the least stroke of the pen drop out of the law or the least stroke of a pen meaning the little dot or a, like the crossing of a t won't be taken away from the law and uh and so if you're not trusting in jesus christ you're going to be judged under the law of god and there's no hope for anybody judged under the law of god Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And a woman who marries, a, or, or a man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. He's saying 
those things that these Pharisees were doing, they're guilty of breaking the law. And they were. They were getting rid of their wives and causing them to commit adultery. And they were taking other wives that had been married and committing adultery themselves. But they were guilty under the law, and they knew it. So uh, there was a rich man. He, he was Lazarus. His name was Lazarus. He was uh, a. He used to wear, wear a fine apparel. It says uh, maybe like a, something like this blue, uh, but uh, linen and all this stuff. And he didn't have to wear a COVID mask, you know. Uh, but he was very, very finely appareled. And then uh, Lazarus set out at his gate, and he was crippled and had sores, and even the dogs were going out there licking his sores, and he was in torment, and he was begging for food, and he didn't find much from the rich man. And as it was, the rich man and Lazarus ended up in Hades. There were two parts portions of Hades before Jesus Christ uh, died for the sins of man and the one half where the people were righteous was called the bosom of Abraham and Abraham was there and all those people who died by having faith in God and doing what God had asked them to do and lived out what God had asked them to do nobody being perfect but all being justified by faith, doing exactly what God had told them to do, making their sacrifices and trusting in God's provision through that would end up in the bosom of Abraham. Not uh, doing it to be seen by men, but doing it to be seen by God and having a heart that was pure towards God. Uh, and so the rich man wasn't in the bosom of Abraham. He was in the side of Hades that had flames, the flames of hell, as we know them. He was burning in hell. He was in torment, and he said, Abraham, send Lazarus over here so that he could dip his finger into some water and, and put a drop of water on my tongue because I'm being tormented. And Abraham said, look, there's a huge chasm between us and you, and nobody can come from here to there or from there to here. And uh, so he said, well, send him to my five brothers and, uh, and let him proclaim to my five brothers uh, how bad it is here in hell so that they would repent and not come and join me. And uh, Abraham said, they have the law and, and the prophets. And if they didn't follow after the law and the prophets, they will not listen if somebody is raised up from the dead and comes up and proclaims to them the good news of uh, salvation through faith in God. And now it's salvation through Jesus Christ uh, because he was the final sacrifice for man. Uh, they won't listen, even if someone was raised up from the dead. And uh, they, won't, they won't listen. Even when uh, another Lazarus did get raised up from the dead because he was uh, Jesus' uh, friend and the brother of Mary and Martha, Jesus' friend, he raised up from the dead on the fourth day. Uh, the Pharisees wanted to kill him because he was a terrible witness against them that Jesus raised somebody up from the dead. And so, believe me, these scribes and Pharisees, they were wanting to protect their power and they weren't worried about uh, getting uh, saved. They had such hard hearts. There was no way that even if somebody was raised up from the dead, they wouldn't believe. And that's a fact.
I don't know where you're at today, but I hope that you don't have a hard heart towards God and that you put your faith and trust in Him each and every day. And, uh, and it's a day-by-day process that we need to take up our cross daily and follow the Lord Jesus. I pray that for you and for my family also back there. And uh, praise God uh, for another day to read his word and to be in fellowship. God bless you all. Bye.